Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at Speedway. We're checking in once again, 99904W. It's Woosh. is a great team to check in with. I remember them last year had some awesome features for robot. And they're back again with some other great ones. I think one of the key ones, too, we're going to be focusing on here is their uh, color sort. Able to do it really, really fast compared to some other teams that we've seen out there. So we'll dive more into the reasons on why that is. Some other great stuff in the robot. You'll see some different overviews go through. Maybe some changes that this team is looking at making as well, too. So let's hear back from Woosh here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Carson, let's dive into this robot here. One of the things that you want to start with is your uh, parking mechs. So you can describe a little bit more on how it's working out for your team, and we'll see it work. So um, we have a double park mechanism. It utilizes the intake structure, which makes it so we don't need a secondary system in order to park. It saves a lot of weight. We basically do this by attaching pistons to our entire floating intake, and we use this uh, distance sensor right here to detect if a ball's in there. So we'll demonstrate it now. So if we put a ball in the intake real quick, we can press our pre-made macro, and it should reverse until it detects it and then push itself up. Um, it's really good for the end of the match because a normal park just by itself is five points, while a double park is 30 points, I believe. So it's a huge swing. It's possibly more than an entire long goal in that control zone. So I think it's a really good thing to run at the end of the match. So looking at Matt's strategy then, like how do you make that decision of like, hey, we're going to abandon potentially a long goal and go for the double park. Can you just walk me through how your team makes that decision? Yeah, I can tell you about it. So we, we look at the long goal. So. The hooks are a big play this year, so we have to make sure that the goal is not easily hookable, which we check for blocks on either side of the goal that are in the, the wrong color. So say we're on Red Alliance, if there's a bunch of blue blocks on one side of the goal, we can't really like abandon the goal because they can just hook it and score their entire control zone. So what we do instead, if the goal has only our blocks or say no blocks and just our blocks in the control zone, we can say, hey, teammate, you go park and we'll try and hold the goal down for the last like 10 seconds. And then with like five seconds left, we swing by the park zone and park ourselves. Walk me through your autonomous mode too. How are you guys approaching autos, uh, both on skills and also from a competition field standpoint? So our skills auto, we are in the process of development. We are trying to get a maximum route of the center goal and such. Um, our actual autonomous routes, we've tried to get really fast scoring right away. Cause what we've seen again with the hooks or the hoods, We've seen the teams grab a bunch of blocks and score them really early so they could bump them through and get the control zone. It makes it harder for us to get our own. So we try and score right away as fast as we can and then possibly use our hooks to push them all the way through and then win that control zone and win the auto. Charlie, let's talk about this color sort uh, and what you're doing for it. When we were talking earlier, it's a little bit more unique, able to get a bit quicker than what some other teams are doing. So walk me through exactly how this works and I'd love to see a couple blocks come in. Yeah. So a big thing with our uh, bot this year is we have a mechanical color sort at the bottom of our intake. So a lot of teams actually use the color sort by just X taking at the top. But one big issue we found with this is it eats up a lot of your storage if you accidentally intake the wrong color blocks. So by having a mechanical color sort and having it lower on the bot, it allows us to quickly remove the other team's blocks and does not impact our storage if we accidentally pick it up. So here I'll have them show it off real quick. Red goes in and the blue gets shot out. So when you say mechanical color sort, are there still sensors that are, that are actually detecting yes, things actually. on there? Yeah, so there's an optical in the bottom. Uh, you should be able to see the little white light uh, down in the bottom of the intake. And then uh, the motor tracks like how, how, uh, how many rotations it's done. So after detecting it, it tracks how far the ball block has moved past it and fires the piston at just the right time where it'll only kick out that one block. So it, making sure that it only kicks the one block out and the rest of the block shouldn't easily flow through it. Walk me through like, how did you come up with this uh, designer concept? Like, did you like create something you're like, hey, that didn't work the way you wanted, now we do this? Um, so we saw uh, some early MOA matches where teams uh, with an S-style bot, they're, whenever they would color sort at the top, A, ate up a lot of their storage, and B, sometimes it would get shot out in front of the goal in that little pocket, and then block them from scoring. And we really didn't want to have that like issue of only being able to de-score out of the top. So being able to get rid of the problem instantaneously rather than having to wait all the way to your scoring and possibly messing up your scoring process was a big like factor of why we did it. Pass back Carson and a couple other things to talk about this robot. Uh, starting with your uh, your hook, your kind of that wing hook that you have on there. Just walk me through that a little bit. Yeah, so like I said, in both autonomous and driver, the hook is a huge part of the scoring element of this game. So 
by utilizing our hook, we can score one or two blocks and basically control the entire goal just by bumping it with the hook. So one uh, thing that we do with our hook that we don't see a lot of other teams doing, it's really simple to do. We basically make it so the starting height of our hook is perfect. So at this height, we can drive straight into the goal without having to lift and drop it down in the goal, which would cause a lot of error. So we just drive, we swing around the goal and drive into it. So we don't have to lift it all. It allows us to get all of the blocks in the goal instead of having to skip or like cut out one or two because we have to drop it down inside the goal. It's really easy fix and it does really well for what it's supposed to do. Wrapping on this robot here, I was passing back to Charlie. Talk a little about uh, what you have for aligners now. And then we were talking earlier that you might be looking at making some changes to what you're doing for aligners. Um, so, ri so right now we have these like outside aligners here uh, that help, but uh, Sometimes if you are misaligned slightly in auto, they can get caught and jammed up. So we're planning on moving to a, only a single middle aligner and that kind of triangular sh shape to help align us on that goal better in the future. Wish it's so great to talk to you once again. I always enjoy watching your team out on the field. So we can, of course, wait to see how you do here. But looking forward to future competitions for you as well. Thanks for telling us more about this and look forward to seeing how you do here at Speedway. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.